Do, 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 Chris Courtney, New Pragmatic. Uh, it's always a good time to talk about typography. Never has it been a better time to talk about typography than right now. Um, regardless of whether you are in print or in digital media, there are, there's never been so many tools available to you as there are right now regarding typography. And today, I'm gonna start us off, because I'd like to kind of set the table a little bit. I wanna start us off talking about how, how, we, how we pair typography together. And um, I've given some talks on this before. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stay away from the, the slide decks today. We're, uh, the, let's, let's just um, let's workshop this a bit. Uh, but I'm going to start us off by talking about um, how we pair typography, and then I want to look at I want to look at a new way to do this. As you can see here, variable fonts are widely supported by operating systems and by web browsers. They are sorely lacking when it comes to design applications. Also lacking when it comes to any sort of um, office applications. You can't use a variable font inside of like a Google Doc or Slide. Um, but you can use it in Illustrator and Photoshop. Support, sh it says shipping very soon for Figma. And I'm very happy for that. Um, Figma is our preferred tool for, uh, for doing, doing mock-ups and prototypes here. Um, so shipping very soon on Figma. Sketch, not so much. Um, I'm not even, I'm, I wasn't even sure Quark Express was still around. I haven't used that in probably close to a decade. Um, but there you are. Um, so design apps, it's coming along. This is one of those rare moments when Adobe is looking really good to me right now. Um, it, it's almost like Adobe's having their Microsoft moment, the, the like early 2000s Microsoft, where they were like, hmm... Are we going to be? Are we going to be? Um, Apple's starting starting to eat our lunch with this iPod, and they, then they came out with the phone, and like the tide turned. I feel like Sketch, the success of Sketch and Figma, are beginning to put pressure on Adobe to turn the tide on some of these applications. So we're seeing Adobe become a, an early adopter of things like variable fonts. And this is very important to us. But as you can see, with the where the web is concerned, this technology is ready to go, and if we go over to can I use you can see that's been coming on coming on for a little while obviously earlier versions uh, not so much but now you have it supported in Edge and Firefox and Chrome and Safari pretty much all the way down you still can't use it on your Blackberry and I'm sorry about that if you have a Blackberry um, but that said that's it so variable fonts are coming along so we can begin to to look at this as a viable option. Let's go ahead and open up Illustrator for the first time in I don't know how long, and let's talk about pairing. Because when it comes time to pair typography, there's really there's really three things that, that I, I look for. You can pair by weight, you can pair by structure, and then w when we talk about pairing by structure, there's two different ways that you can really do that. Uh, the first is uh, st structural difference, and then the second is st structural structural similarity. And when we talk about when we talk about um, that's not how you spell similarity. Um, so when we talk about structure, there's two different ways we we can look at pairing. The, one of the easiest ways to, to really pair typography is, is simply by weight. And let's, let's look at that really quickly. If I, had a, if I had a restaurant, and we're just gonna say um, uh, McDonald's. Not that that's a restaurant, but you get the idea. Um, if, this, if, we were at, if we had a restaurant called McDonald's, and it had an address, We'll put Blue Island because that's the street outside from where I'm at right now. I'm going to change this down to where it's a 
a little easier to get all this information on the screen. Um, yes, and we'll just put this at like 90%. That's not what I want it. Let's do auto. There we go. So if I was wanting to separate these two elements out by weight, I would just simply grab the top element and say, okay, make it bold and grab the bottom element and make it light or regular. And there you go. We've now separated our, our, our information out by weight. That's a pretty simple thing to do. Another way that we often pair typography together is we make one of them larger. So I'll say this one is, this one is 42, for instance. And suddenly now we're, now the typography has a little hierarchy to it. And that's fine. And I'm going to say Casa, Casa Pueblo, mainly because I just don't want to have McDonald's on my screen. Um, so Casa Pueblo, Blue Island, there you are. So that's, that's like really simple typography pairing. And it allows us to, it allows us to, to think about this in terms of, I can use a single font. I can um, pair it with size. I can pair it with uh, the, the actual weight um, of the or weight or style. And, and that's, that's really all, all there is to it. But, but often we want to, we want to uh, pair this structurally. And even in this instance where we're, we were just pairing by weight, we still had to use two different, two different font files. Uh, this font file here is a bold, and this is a regular. So, so even when we were shipping this across, you had to ship that. Uh, you had to, if you were online, you would have to ship two files across to make this structure. You couldn't make it with just one file. That's an important thing to remember as we as we move forward. The next thing that I want to look at is I want to look at structure. And I'm gonna look at uh, specifically differential structure. Uh, when, we, when we go to pair two serif fonts together, or I'm sorry, sans serif fonts together, I have serif, sans serif fonts on the screen right now. If we were to ha have these two sans serif fonts, and I'm going to go down and get something that should be familiar to all of us. Um, Let's get something like uh, let's just get Helvetica. Okay, so Helvetica is there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make it the same type. Uh, so that's regular Helvetica. We're gonna give this a size of 30, and there we are. So we've got Helvetica here, and that's that's great. Um, I need I want something structurally different uh, to act as a label for this. So if I if I had something here at the top that said restaurant I want a I want something that has a real different feel to it so that I can give this like a, a label feel so I'm gonna come through and I'm going to let's see here I should have something yeah I'll get Proxima Nova extra condensed in here and I have restaurant misspelled there we are so I've got restaurant now, and I'm gonna go ahead and convert this. Let's go ahead and make that all caps. And let's let's go with this further. Let's let's go ahead and shrink this down. I'm gonna say 20. And then I'm gonna make it really heavy. Give it black, and then let's go ahead and space it out a bit and now let's let's take it down to even more so 14 and now you you've paired you've paired two sans serif sans serif typefaces together but we still have the same problem we had before where we have two font files we have two we're still loading two files this could even get more complicated if i said oh i want this to actually be bold well now I've got to load three files to do this um, 
and what we don't want to do is we don't want to say, oh well, I want I want this to be I I want to save on that, so I'm just going to load I'm just going to do it like this. Here, here you're using weight to to separate these apart, but they're they're all the they're all the same they're all the same typeface. And what's worse is sometimes you will see this, and Railway's not opening, so I'm gonna I'll go back to Proxima Nova where it's basically the same it's the same typeface but there's they're slightly different from one another and i'll do this here to to even show it a bit more uh pronounced so here you go here's a perfect example this this structurally is fine there's there's but there's too much similarity between the two two typefaces Mainly, it's it comes down to the fact that these A's are so close together. There's really no reason to use a different typeface between the the address and the name of the restaurant. You could get by, you could basically put these all in the, in the same typeface and be okay. So when we're when we're pairing typography. I want I definitely want there to be a difference and if, if you're using the same if the same structure the same like sans serif or serifs together I want there to be a structural difference and with Proxima Nova here at the top and not just Proxima Nova but Proxima Nova condensed was the version that we had pulled let's go back down and get that really fast yeah, so we have Proxima Nova extra condensed. There's a lot. There's a there's a big structural difference between this and the Casa Pueblo. And I will scoot that down so that we can see it a little closer, a little more uh, in, in the middle of the screen. There's a big difference between these two when we're pairing them together. Now, this would be, a, and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that as well because we don't want that. And if we're being honest, we want that at a smaller size anyway. So restaurant, Casa Casa Pueblo, Blue Island. So we have we have three files that we're loading, but this is pairing together be better because because of that difference between condensed and regular widths. Now, if we were to push forward and say, all right, so we've talked about structure. And difference. Let's talk about structure and similarity. And for this, I'm going to copy the same information. And I'm going to now cast this all in. Let's put it in light. No, Meriwether is not loading. Let's put it all in uh, Minion. And you'll see that you'll see that there's it says variable here, and we'll get to that variable piece in just a moment. But here, all of our information is loaded. I'm going to change it all to the same size. So it says Restaurant uh, Casa Pueblo, Blue Island. I want to actually pull in typography that is that is going to allow us to pair a serif and a sans serif effectively together. And here is where difference but with or structure with a similar with similarities come into play. I'm looking for something that has the same the same basic feel of the structure of the A for instance or the structure of the E. And what I want to do now is I want to come back to I want to come back to Proxima Nova. And I will, and this is one of the great things as you're going through with uh, Illustrator that I, I often miss with uh, Figma is I can go through and see the typography change. Um, here with Proxima Nova though, you can see I, while it is, um, it is Proxima Nova is far more geometric than Minion. Um, I do have a similar structure to the A, even though I do not have the, the feet that are on the A. I do have a similar structure to the E, but the structure here is is slightly more narrow, and that's really where if I if I decided I want it um, 
if I decided I wanted something more narrow, that's where I could come in with, with the condensed. And the condensed, the condensed version of Proxima Nova is far closer to Minion than the regular version. And I could, I'll show that to you now. I'll type in 111 Blue Island. And what's unfortunate here is the the one one ones get a bit in the way and as you can see it's actually even a little more condensed than than our our minion variation but what if i what if i told you that there was a way for us to really make these more similar more similar to one another and this is really where this is where we really begin to, to look into variable typography. Because if I'm wanting to match, if I'm wanting to if I'm wanting to pair these two typefaces together, and as we as we just saw a moment ago, one 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 blue island. Aside let's take those those numbers out again. This is close structurally but it's not as close as it could be. I want to just highlight Minion. And Minion has a variable set. Uh, it, it, is, it, it is variable. It, this is the variable version of Minion. If I came in and click this variable font tool right here, I can actually make these work together. And that's because this is a single file with all the possible variations of Minion built into it. To show you this in Illustrator, all I have to do is click this, and I have two sliders here available to me. I have a weight slider, and I have an optical size slider. And as you can see, the optical size allows me to make that more condensed to the point that these are basically now the same structurally as, as one another in, fr from a condensed perspective, but they are still different. So if I came back in now and, and type this back in as Casa Pueblo, which by the way is our Mexican restaurant down the street, great food. I'm going to go ahead and make the, actually, I will shrink the address down. And this obviously is far too big. I will go ahead and, I will go ahead and change that. Actually, I'm going to leave that alone. Pull that in and make it bolder. And narrow its size, and then I will say this is 16, or I will say it's 12. But here, here now we have a really refined pairing that structurally is similar, even though the type sizes are, are different, structurally these things are all similar. If I want it to go further and make this a little more pronounced, I could say Casa Pueblo bold. And I still have the ability to come back in and adjust everything. And, and what's important here is you, is you see some numbers appearing. And you'll see, you'll see that this, this uh, when I change it to bold, and then I came in and adjusted this, it immediately changes this variation to regular. And it's it's now, the moment I touch that optical size, it is now officially in the realm of its own concept. So even if you go through and select a particular type of, you select a particular variation, it will, it will default back to its variable form in in the selector over here to the in the character panel or palette. Um, and if you want to save this, if you said, okay, um, I want all my restaurant names, and I'll, I'll continue to futz with this a little bit. Um, 
I want all of my restaurant names to be this this version of the minion variable concept 36 uh, point I could then come in and say all right let's pull open the character palette which is where did my oh, type Ty yeah there it is <laughs> I'll pull in my character styles there they are come in the paragraph styles and I will simply say uh, this is um, minion uh, listing header and there we are and now if I want to come back and, and apply it up here say minion listing header and it takes on that same that same styling so variable fonts give you control ultimate control over several facets uh, there are other way there are other um, acts th th these are called axes uh, or axes um, that the <laughs> There are other ways to do this, and and for a complete view of all the possible um, variations that are that are available for each individual uh, font that you could possibly use, there is a site. Um, we we just looked at it just a moment ago. This variable font site. This is the support page. So vfonts.com slash support. And it gives you an overview of where things are at the moment. For And this was last updated July 31st. So we're talking basically a week ago. This, this, this support page is often updated. But if we come over here to just variable fonts, which is vfonts.com, there are page after page after page of variable fonts. And the variations that are possible to work with for each of these is they are built in on a slider and some of these have a little bit of variation and there are custom variations available so as you'll see here this is um this is league spartan variable and we'll look at this actually in a web version in just a moment but league spartan it goes from 200 in weight to 900 in weight and if you wanted that to be anywhere in between you could um, but if you come down here uh, this BC minimum variable it has a very low difference on weight but what is interesting is this ink trap this ink trap is this 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 typeface is really built for print and the reason I say that is, and I'm going to try to zoom in here, this ink trap, I know that these look like really weird, really weird characters. Why would anybody want to care a, a U with a notch out of it? This is because when we are printing on the newsprint, and believe it or not, there are, there are markets in the world where newspapers are actually growing. I'm going to be in India next week. Um, newspapers grew by 8% in that country last year. And they have a great mobile base of users, but yet newspapers keep growing. So there's totally reasons to continue making making typography that prints well on really crappy paper. And newsprint is some of the crappiest paper that you can print on that isn't toilet, toilet paper. But these little ink wells, what happens typically when you have a let's put this ink trap on zero what will happen here with these with these typefaces is where this t comes down and makes an angle there'll be a pool of ink that to, that fills this corner or this this um little hook here on the u will fill up same thing on the on the p's and the q's but if we come back over and we we put that ink well or ink trap all the way up you basically are building this in such a way that you're saying okay I know when these two areas come together that the ink is going to going to lo logically fill in there so I need to I need to take ink away from that area 
and just let the paper do its work. That's what this typeface is doing. This typeface is planning for the imperfections of the printing surface, and that's why they look like this. There are a number of typefaces out there that do this, but this is actually the first one that I've seen that allows you to determine whether you have to use it everywhere or just on the smallest typography that's on your page because you're not going to have this issue. You're not gonna have this issue at large sizes. Where you're gonna have this issue is when it's really small. Like think, think, um, think stock market, think um, box scores for like football and baseball games or cricket. Um, think, it, think about those settings, um, classified ads, if you can remember those. So ink traps have a place, ink traps have a, a, a place, and, but this is one of the instances where you're not gonna see ink trap listed as a possible variation on many, on many typefaces. You just, you just won't, this is the only one I've seen it on. But that, ta that, that, that leads us into the next piece when talking about vari variable typography. Every typeface can have its own variations making them infinitely more customizable without necessarily having to ask a particular typesetter to or a, a, a font foundry to make you a whole new set of typefaces. So let's let's come on down. Let's look at some more of these. This is one that I really like. Now, it it cheats a little bit. It cheats a little bit in that. Um, it has a sans and then a strange variable. So these are really two typefaces. The sans, as you can see, it gets heavier, but the width here on strange is where it is at. That is, um, so you have the ability to stretch out certain characters and I just think it's the coolest damn thing ever. Um, there are some there it's it's literally strange if you look at how the f is structured um if you look at the difference on you know, the a's and um how the um how the lowercase g and j they hit at an angle rather than the curve it's meant to be a strange kooky typeface and i just love the hell out of it it's great and luckily in this instance, unlike most of these, um, so here, uh, this this uh, variable uh, typeface with the ink trap, that one's a pay. So you gotta buy that one. However, strange, free for non-commercial use. So you could pull you could pull strange into a project and and work with that right now. Um, I really think it's it's a fantastic one. We're gonna look at it in just a little bit. Um, as you can see, most of these, most of these are focused on weight, but there, are, there will be some that will come across that will have more like, here we go, adapter. So adapter has an optical size that comes and goes, has ob obviously weight. So really lightweight, really heavy weight. And then the italic is also built into it here referred to a slant. Um, now we're talking about you know take take the take the 800 variations in in f form of width here with the 14 different variations in optical size and the 10 different variations in italic you know whatever 18 or whatever 800 times 10 times 14 is that's how many different possible settings you get out of one one font file that's just unheard of. And when we talk about, when we talk about the difference in loading time, if I had to load two fonts before to get two variations, but I could load this one font and get 8,000 variations, and I'm probably being conservative there because I just did 800 times 10. I didn't even do the 14 yet. We could get 
80,000 variations. And yet, my load time, my load time in the browser is half. So I could get two or 80,000 variations, but the 80,000 variations is gonna load twice as fast as the two separate files. That's massive. That gives you the opportunity to do a whole lot with a single with a single file. And I know what you're saying. I know I, I, I've I've been I've had this argument in my head before. Well, Chris, I still want to use I still want to use two typefaces. I still want to have a, a serif and a sans serif, and that's fine. Get yourself the best, most beautiful cut sand or serif that you can find for all your body copy and then get one workhorse versatile variable sand serif that'll cover everything else you're still only loading two font files for a world of typographical opportunity i i can't stress it enough i've seen i've seen more students over the years load i don't know 12 google font variations in different weights oh i, I want to use this here and we we'll use that there when they could have loaded one really solid variable font and the fallback here people are always asking well what's the fallback well it works just like every other font if you if you run into an issue where something isn't supported then fall back to a a single version, or fall back to a serif or something. The the vast majority of browsers that people are using today are going to load the variable font. And we we've had font fallbacks for ever. So so the issue of oh it might not work on the browser that's solved, that's been solved. We have font fallbacks done. Don't stay away from variable fonts just because you're worried about it not loading on one uh, machine somewhere. Fo focus that attention on making your site accessible. Okay? Focus that attention on making sure that you have alt tags on your on your photos so screen readers can can read them. That's where you, that's the thing I want you sweating sweating over, not this. This is easy. This is simple. Find yourself a good workhorse variable font and lighten your page load for fonts by half. Let's keep looking though, because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff here. Um, Atonia, um, and I gotta be honest. I, oh, and this is interesting. Chisel. So there's some there's a again, not all of them are gonna just flex on weight. Some of them will flex on chisel. That's cool. If you're looking for something unique, and that's the real that's the real kicker here with variable fonts. Uniqueness. Customization. You can make certain that your site looks like nobody else's with a good variable font. Um, let's keep going. And again, a lot of these, a lot of these are paid. Some of them are not. And I want to I want to focus on a couple of those really quickly. IBM Plex. IBM Plex is open source. You can get it right off of GitHub. Um, it has a lot of variations, so there's more of a condensed. There is a regular uh, regular width. Um, it has a very lightweight. It has a significant heavyweight. Wouldn't call that black. It's 700. But I'd say it's like bold, um, but it but it has a lot. It's well thought out of. It's well thought out. Um, it has a ton of characters available for it. Uh, so IBM Plex is one that I would definitely look at. And I absolutely, I absolutely love, love the italic version of it. It's gorgeous stuff. Um, let's look at some more of these. Uh, Tiny is, Tiny is uh, open source, but. I gotta be honest, with you, I don't find that to be terribly useful, uh, but you might be able to find some use for some of this, uh, some of the other variations. And the lovely thing is, like, if I decide to load more, there's always more available. 
And look at this. Look at look at graduate. Um, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to work with graduate here to see what we see what we get, because that is a, that is as deep and it's open source. That is as deep a set of variations that I've seen yet. It's that's just insane. And as you can see, wow, look at the difference, this contrast. So this, this started out, this started out looking like a, oh, pen kill, I'll get to that. Don't worry, I got you. Look at this. This goes from being like Letterman style college jacket thing to chic and sophisticated. And some of that she can sophisticate. Some of it's still very much college graduate. Uh, but it's it's way more sophisticated. That, that U. That U is way more sophisticated there than it is there. Oh, so much better. So much better. I want to I come through. Look at the work that we can do here. Just fantastic. And now, and now we're really getting into into the sophistication. Hell, I haven't even touched half of the half of the pot. Oh, look at that! Now we're getting into the Wild West. Oh, now we're starting to add a little bit of um, a little bit of a true serif. So really, before it was like a slab serif, and now it's it's um, yeah, that that feels really Wild West. Oh my my goodness, I'm. I'm in love, and I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't messed with graduate to this point uh, prior to now. Uh, to be completely honest with you, oh, that's lovely. So that is a, that's Eduardo Tooney, and it says it's on GitHub. Let's go look. Let's go look. What, what do we got here? Okay, so uh, graduate variable project. You know what? I think I just want to pull this in. I want to pull this in. Does anybody else want to want to pull this in? I just want to play with it right now. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna download this. Um, I'm just going to yeah. I'm just gonna download the file. Let's look at the README real quick. Uh, okay, so this just kind of tells me the history of it. Um, oh, gradual single. Wow, it's on. Really? Is is this is this really loaded here? Okay, so right now, Graduate is on Google Fonts. However, it's just the regular weight. So this isn't the this isn't the one that would have all the variations. For that, you really I need to come back. I need to focus. I need to focus. Okay, so for that, I really need to come in. The file that I'm interested in is this TTF this TTF is going to have everything that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. So I've got the graduate TTF. Um, I'm going to come back because I probably need to... Let's look at this. Oh. Oh, well, that's geeky fun. So here he's he's kind of showing you what happens um, if you when you adjust the axes to their mi maximum and minimums for each possible variation. Oh, that's just that's just lovely stuff. So let's go ahead and get that. Let's get this into a project. Um, so you know, I I had this set up to come over to Visual Studio Code and work through some some font. Uh, I was basically going to import these into my existing new pragmatic site and I was just going to I was we we're just going to use this as a as a as a sandbox today. So let's go ahead. I need to pull I need to open noop. And I will go into my noop folder. Um, as you can see there's a lot of mess here. In case you're wondering how much uh, how much information is actually in here, if I open up the blog, you can see there's there's quite a bit of content coming for you folks in the actual, actual um, uh, new pragmatic UX course. So, hang on to that. As soon as I get back from India, we're launching that. 
But I'm going to drop that TTF file. That true, it's a true type file. I'll drop that right into fonts. So let's go ahead and come down here to downloads. And I'm just going to drop graduate right here. So now graduate is there. And so we have a, so we're all on the same page. I'm going to go ahead and thanks illustrator for participating. I will open you up again soon, I guess. I, you know, as long as Figma is not supporting uh, variable fonts, I'll have to, I'll have to use illustrator if I want to just kind of geek out and play around. Um, but for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and load in my next variable uh, typeface to play with here and that is going to be graduate so I've got a font file here and I'm just going to point directly to it and it's in all caps so grad u8 and I'm guessing to call it it would just be graduate it will it will let me know soon I'm going to now say in instead of, I'm going to say graduate here in my CSS, I've just applied this to like all the HTML. So if the HTML hasn't been styled beyond um, beyond graduate should now show up everywhere in my site. So I'm gonna come over here and let's go to Firefox. And there you are. There you are. Um, you may be wondering how all of that happened so quickly and I'll explain it. I'm using Gatsby. Um, I have a I have a server running right here. So as you can see, when uh, anytime I make an update, if I said if I if I undid this and saved it, you see it recompiled. So I will pull that back out and I will say graduate and it recompiled again and here we are. So all the typography that has not been styled in my in my project now has graduate in it. And as you can see, that's like this label, that is this headline, that is this um, subhead right here. So Pankeel, back to your question that you had just a moment ago, and if you're wondering, Pankeel's asking questions over in the YouTube chat. Um, back to the question you had a while ago, how do we how do we style this? How do I how do I really get into work with this? Well, I want to show you a couple things. So first of all, I want to take a look at just how badass awesome Firefox is. Uh, this is something I learned from Jen Simmons. By the way, Layout Land, one of the best YouTube series that you could possibly watch. Way better than the crap the crap that I put out there. Uh, Jen Simmons, she's she's for real, 100%. Go watch her series. Uh, she's also great person i've had i've been lucky enough to have uh t cross paths with her at a couple of conferences good peeps so anyway i'm going to inspect element here in the inspector in firefox there is a panel for fonts and as you can see look at all the variations that are built right in to firefox look at that madness I'm, t I'm telling you that is that is madness that Firefox is just that good it's 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 now this is Firefox developer edition I cannot claim that it's in the regular Firefox I, ha I haven't looked mainly because I have the developer edition um, you can get the you can by the way why don't we just why don't we just point you to where you can get that too because that is uh, that's something that I think, if you're if you're really um, if you're really working with this uh, developer edition, so Firefox developer edition would be right here. So it's just literally Mozilla.org, en, uh, us, Firefox slash developer. You can Google it, okay? But this is the this is the edition that I'm using. And that is how I have all these cool tools. These tools are amazing. And the fact that I can sit here and just, I can kind of, I can kind of sit here and determine for myself, okay, what do I want my, what do I want my styling to be for this? 
and I can see it on the page. I, like this is this is my this is my site, so I can sit here and style it on screen. Um, now the question is, how do we get from having all this to actually having it show up in the site? Uh, because if I come over here to this particular page, none of that's there, right? Well, there is a there is a variable fonts guide. Oddly enough, also by Mozilla. We like the Mozilla. I'm not going to take your survey right now, Mozilla. I am going to say that I'm very happy with your product. Um, we want to come down and look at font variation settings. Font variation settings, as they state here, are very similar to font feature settings. And font feature settings, if we come over here, you'll recognize this. Uh, if you're going to use font feature settings, you have to, you it, it, they have specific mapping for the terminology. Um, so SMCP, things like that. Um, so the syntax for font variation settings is somewhat similar. So instead of saying font weight, you say WGHT. So let's take that concept and let's like I'm just going to grab this grab this straight from the docs I'm going to bring it over to I'm going to bring it over to my um, styled components so here I've, I've got a font weight of 500 in styled components and again if you're unfamiliar there is an entire front end development series on uh, on the YouTubes where I walk through how to create style components. But here I'm gonna drop that in to my blog post JS here in Gatsby. It's saved. So now I'm looking for the I'm looking for this font variation. I'm looking for a weight of 375 to show up in browser on the headline because it's the H1 that I've styled. So for blog main styled H1 font variation settings. So when I come back over here, I should be able to see if I refresh. The only thing I'm looking for here is 375. And it says that I have a font weight, unfortunately, of 400. I do not know why that would be set to 400, nor do I know why That is so, um, yeah, that's interesting. So let's try that again. If I change this to font weight, let's change it to 500. I just want to see if it'll tick up or down for us. So graduates loading, it does not seem to be changing weight for me. It is still set here at 400. It's taking in all the other bits as well. It seems like that's being set right there. So font variation settings, extra. All right, so I bet you that I need to call XTRA instead of W. XTRA, and I'm going to say, just so we can see it, I'm going to say 550. This is a real trick with variable fonts. There's all sorts of custom little levers that you can pull. So we have extra 550. Let's come back over, refresh. And now, if we highlight that, the extra did not move. That's really interesting. So we were able to get the font in, but we are struggling with the font variation. So let's do this. Let's go to graduate variable font. Let's see if we can pull open Let's see if we can pull open 
this uh, project and get an idea. So here's the source files. Um, to graduate, I want to, it's unfortunate because this uh, panel over here that looks like it would be helpful. Are you seeing a syntax error? Um, instance. I'm not seeing, and I'm not, I, I also have not uh, realized this before. Let's, um, it says text, new text box, test. Okay. I'm not seeing that. Okay, so this is a Font Lab project, which Font Lab's pretty awesome, but that's not working for me. So I want to, I want to go back to um, our Mozilla docs, and I'm just gonna try to, I'm gonna stay away from font variation settings, and I'm just gonna try to set it the old fashioned way. So we'll just say font weight uh, we got to lose the extra here. So we'll say font weight 550. Just trying to get that to move off. Um, and it could be something that I have set somewhere else, but I don't think it is. So let's go ahead and come back over. Refresh. It does look like it got a little heavier. Let's inspect it. Now, now it's at 550. Okay. So... Um, you put X, okay, that's that's an interesting point, Pankill. Pankill points out that uh, I had lowercase extra here instead of uppercase extra. Let's try that. Um, and to see if that's working, I'm going to put that at 750 now. I just want to, you know, this is kind of how I, I, I poke, poke, poke until we actually get through. Uh, let's refresh. And pen kill as much as I wish that was going to be the issue, it did not take. Um, it does make me wonder if it should be all caps. So should is it a XTRA? And it was XTRA. Look at that. XTRA all caps get you to the 750. <laughs> All right, so now, now let's play with now let's play with that. All right, so now I'm gonna say X uh, X O P Q. So we'll do and and here is something where I have to come back to, I have to come back to the variable fonts guide because I'm not quite sure what it wants me to do for multiple. Does it want a comma or let's see here? Give me a font. Oh, here it is. So, yes, it wants a comma. So I will say um, comma XOPQ. And I forgot already what the setting on that was. Let's see. XOPQ 160. Save it. So now, now when I save this and come back over and refresh, I'm looking for XOPQ to be set to 160. I'm just going to move it down just so we can see. I want that to be 160 and 750 refresh. And it holds. Hot diggity. So we've broken through. This is um, inspect element. So as we come down, you can see XOPQ is set here to one, uh, 160 extra. Um, all caps all caps I, I would not have guessed this in a million years that it was one in all caps um, if I wanted to mess with the grade I'm gonna take now I'm gonna take grade and throw it all the way up to 20 um, I will take the optical size and set it to 8 um, yeah let's set the optical side OPSZ so comma OPSZ and that's eight, and we'll comma again, and now we'll say grad, 
um, grad is 20. Save it. And we're customizing, 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 com customizing the typography. And now we'll refresh. And it holds. Customizing, 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 customizing with variable fonts. Um, hot damn, I like that font. And I'd never seen it before. I did like the first time I've ever seen ever seen graduate and I, I'm blown away. Let's just go go back and look at it. Look at all the variable options. I can't begin to give you the number of the sheer possible options that you have here. It's it's uh it's something like 160 times 700 times 12 times 20 times 100 times 100 times se you somebody else do the math please because i'm not that smart what i know is that you have a extremely versatile go to slab serif font available to you right here with graduate it's free and open source Thank you so much, Eduardo Tooney, for that. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine how much work Eduardo put into this particular font. Now, is that the only font that you should be looking at? Hell no. There's so many options. And as you can see, looky here. Apple's getting into the game too. So variable fonts are extremely extremely powerful i think it's something that you're only going to see more of over time i would do a couple of things if i were you i would bookmark v-fonts.com i would come back to v-fonts.com slash support occasionally to see when these design apps are going to catch up because indesign and express meh you missed me with those figma figma please variable fonts i know it says shipping very soon and they have some really 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 good people over there if you're looking for any reason to support the figma bandwagon it's there not to mention plugins i don't know if you missed the last two days of sessions but figma plugins are badass figma plugins plus variable support font support i don't know what to tell you it's the best thing going and it's also, it's also 12.01, top of the hour. We've been going for an hour on variable fonts, fonts in general. I hope you found it enjoyable. Tomorrow, we're going to take a complete left turn. I guess it's right, so we'll go left. I'm going to talk about Webflow CMS. I am, I am a long time hater on website builders but when you put a CMS behind it you gain my attention and uh, over the past couple of years this platform's grown and grown and grown and I think it's the I think it's the right time to take a serious look at it um, it's not for everybody I'm building my site in Gatsby I wouldn't move off of Gatsby to save my life but for some people it's the right way to go. And I think it deserves a good, solid, critical look. We're going to do that tomorrow. If you are catching up on these videos and you want to join the community, know that it's free to join. Know that there is new UX material, new design material rolling out. It's, it's summer 2019 and all fall and winter belongs to New Pragmatic. Jump in get yourself in the into the community apply for access now without further ado i'm stepping out chris courtney thank you so much for joining and i will see you folks again tomorrow take care